Welcome to Code Report. I'm your host, Connor Hookstra. Three things I'd like to mention at the top of this episode. Number one is that I was recently on a C++ podcast called CVP Cast, hosted by Rob Irving and Jason Turner. The main topic of discussion was competitive programming, so if you're interested, I will leave a link in the description down below. And a huge thank you to Rob and Jason for having me on their show. It was a ton of fun. The second thing I wanted to mention was a comment that got posted, and I'm going to try and do this more going forward whenever a comment is posted that I think is really useful. So there was a comment posted by Denise, and he pointed out that in one of my videos, Top Coder SRM 729 Problem 2, I was using a for loop to construct a set, and I could have been using range insertion and also range uh, constructor. So that's a great point. It would have shortened my code by three lines and also the more STL, the better. The second point in his comment was that using std sort and std unique instead of inserting and constructing a set is much faster. And he links to a website called quickbench.com, which by adding just a little bit of boilerplate code, you can get a really nice visualization and a quick micro benchmarking of your code. Um, he did leave out the construction of a vector that would be needed in order to use the std sort and std unique, but in general, he's absolutely correct. Uh, and that's because although both of them are going to be n log n in complexity, uh, a std set is implemented as a red black tree, which means its elements are not going to be stored contiguously in memory. Whereas with a vector, you're definitely going to have your elements stored contiguously in memory. And so you're going to have a lot less cache misses and you'll be able to take advantage of something called cache locality. So I'll leave a link to both the QuickBench website, which is really cool. I recommend you taking a look at it and also uh, the wiki article on cache locality if you haven't heard of that. And the last thing I want to mention is that I'm going to be on vacation starting next Friday uh, until the following Friday. So there's not going to be a regular Sunday episode, but I will prepare some videos in advance and release those uh, while I'm away. With that said, let's take a look at the contest that happened last week. Last week we had three contests, one from HackerRank on Friday, one from Code Forces on Sunday, and of course our weekly leak code contest on Saturday evening. Taking a look at the top 10 leaderboard, we had UE coming in first place for both the hacker rank and the lead code contest. Second ranked Petra on Code Forces coming in second in the Div 1 contest. Sixth ranked Dotoria coming in fifth. And fifth ranked Omnic placing ninth. The problems I'm going to be covering this week are problem one from the hacker rank contest and problem two from the leak code contest. And in the next couple weeks, uh, due to the fact that I'm going to be on vacation uh, a week from now, I'll be releasing quite a few problems uh, over the next couple of weeks. So let's take a look at our first problem. Our first problem is problem one from hacker rank 101 hack 53 entitled train ticket. The problem states you have to identify the type of berth of a given seat in the sleeper class of the Indian Railways. Every coach has 72 seats divided into 9 compartments. Each compartment has 6 long berths, a pair of lower, a pair of middle, and a pair of upper, and 2 side berths, a side lower and a side upper. The starting seat number in any compartment is one more than the seat number of the last berth in the previous compartment. In particular, the first berth, i.e. lower, in the first compartment is number 1. See the diagram. And the question asks, given a seat number, determine what type of berth it is. And you should output this as LB, MB, UB, SLB, SUB uh, for the corresponding berths. Um, so if we focus on our diagram here. Uh, you know, initially we might just think, well, this is pretty simple. We can just construct a vector that stores what every single uh, seat is uh, for its birth. Um, but that would take a bit of time to type that out. And our next thought might be that, well, we can see that, you know, seven and eight always have the same pattern that they're going to have a difference of eight. So we could sort of use modulus arithmetic to first check seven and eight. And then we could do something similar, but just sort of modify that because, um, you know, for all of the lower berths, the yellow ones here, you can see they always differ by three or five. And that's the same for the uh, middle and upper berths as well. 
well. Um, but this is a little bit more involved that we need to uh, get for solving this problem. And the key is to notice that every single one of these compartments is identical. So basically, if we take our initial idea of sort of building a vector, uh, but only do it for the first eight, and then just take the modulus of whatever the seat number we're given, uh, we can just uh, you know use that as our algorithm. Uh, so let's take a look at the code and see what that looks like. So you can see it is a very simple solution, only two lines. We are constructing a vector of strings of length eight, uh, where each element maps to one of the births, and then just taking our input n and uh, taking the modulus of that to get the corresponding birth. Um, the only thing to note about this that's a little bit tricky is that our first element corresponds actually to the eighth seat uh, because eight modulus eight is going to be zero. So our first seat in our train actually starts from the first index. But other than that, super straightforward. This is going to be a constant uh, time complexity. The next problem that we'll be covering is problem two from Leak Code Contest 74 entitled Number of Matching Subsequences. The problem states, given a string s and a dictionary of words words, find the number of words that are a subsequence of s. So note that a subsequence and a substring are not the same thing. A substring is a contiguous set of characters, meaning in a row, uh, but a subsequence doesn't necessarily have to be contiguous. It can be, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and note that for this problem, the length of our string s will at most be 50,000, the length of our array of words will be at most 5,000, and each individual word in that array will at most have a length of 50. So the example that leak code gives us, we have string s equal to a, b, c, d, e, and our array of words uh, contains four words, and they are uh, the single character a, b, b, a, c, d, and a, c, e. Uh, so if we look for each one of these words in our string s, we'll end up finding three of them. So we can find uh, the string a, obviously, uh, bb we cannot find, uh, acd we can find, and ace we can also find. So for this example, we would output three. Let's take a look at a, another example that's a little bit more complicated. So here we've doubled our string s uh, to be a, b, c, d, e, a, b, c, d, e. And we now only have two words that we're looking for, one that we'll find and one that we won't find. So your initial thought for this problem might have been that we can try to brute force it. That is, for each word, just loop through our string s to check to see if the characters exist in the same order uh, that they exist in our word and um, keep track of how many of those end up existing. Uh, but the length of our string s can be up to 50,000 and the length of our uh, array of words can be up to 5,000 and due to the fact that Lico doesn't release their time limit information my assumption was that this is gonna time out so I did something a little bit more efficient and I made use of made use of something called an index map so this is what the index map looks like for our string s in this example note that uh, technically this goes down all the way to Z but because only the first five characters show up in our string that's the only thing I'm showing and that also really this is 0 1 2 3 4 but I'm showing it this way for uh, the clarity of explaining this problem and so what our index map does is it's a 2d vector and for each character it stores the indices of where that character shows up in our string s and then uh, that combined with an algorithm called upper bound which is basically just a modified binary search that's provided to us uh, in the STL algorithm library uh, we can basically do really really efficient lookups to see if the next character that we need to look for in our uh, current word exists uh, by looking at you know the corresponding vector and then passing in what our current index is so for our first word uh, BBB we're going to initialize our current index to negative one and uh, like I said std upper bound is the function that we're going to be using and what upper bound does is it takes as the first two parameters the begin and pass the end element of a data structure that is sorted typically a vector and the third parameter is a value x, let's say, and it will return to you the next value that is greater than x. So in our case for uh, this word, we're looking at b as our first character. Our current index, which is our value, uh, is negative 1. And we're going to pass uh, to upper bound uh, this vector 
and the value will be negative one. So the next greatest value that exists in this vector will be one. So that's what it'll find. We'll update our current index to one, and then we'll move to the next character, which is also a B. So we'll do the same thing again, uh, but at this point in time, because our current index is one, the next greatest value is six. Uh, so we'll update our current index to six, and uh, then we'll move to our final B. Uh, but at this point, we don't have any uh, more Bs in our string. So we're going to exit uh, this word and then move on to the next one. Uh, so for this one, AAE, we're uh, going to start with our current index equal to negative 1 again. And we're looking for the A. We're going to look in this vector. It's going to find the 0. We're going to move to the next A. And then we're going to find the 5. And then we're going to move to E. And we're going to find the 9. So because we were able to get to the end of our word, uh, we know that we have found uh, one word. And so we'll, up we'll update num found to 1. So let's take a look at our code. So here we have our function that takes two parameters, a string s and a vector of strings words. On our first line, we're declaring our 2D vector, which will be our index map, and initializing the first dimension to be of length 26, which will be the number of characters in our alphabet. On the second line, we're filling our index map by looping through all the characters in S. Uh, for each character, we're going to get the corresponding index in our index map, and we do that by just subtracting the character A. Uh, so A a minus A will give us 0, B minus A will give us 1. Uh, and then for the vector that we get a reference to, we're going to push back onto it the index that we're currently at. Uh, then we initialize our number of words found in our string S equal to 0. Uh, and then we're going to come down to this for loop, uh, which we're going to execute for each word in our vector of uh, words. Uh, so for each word, we're going to initialize our current index to be negative 1 and a boolean found equal to true. Then for each character in that word, we're going to make our call to our STL algorithm upper bound. Uh, the first two parameters that I mentioned are the begin and pass the end elements uh, or iterators uh, for our vector corresponding to the current character that we're at. And then we're also passing in as the third parameter, our current index. And if we are able to find a value that is greater than our current index, uh, we're going to come into this else case and just reset our current index. If not, uh, we're going to set our found equal to false. And then once we have finished this loop, if we are still have found equal to true, we're going to do a post increment and in our number of words found and then return that at the end. And note that there's a small optimization we could do here. Uh, if whenever we uh, are setting found equal to false, we could also break out of this loop, but that's not going to change the complexity of our algorithm. Um, and so, yeah, the complexity of this algorithm is going to be uh, O of A times B times log C. So A is our number of words, B is uh, the maximum length of each word, and C is the length of our string S. So taking a look at the contest that we have coming up next week, it is our lightest week yet uh, with only two contests. So we have a Hacker Rank Women's Code Sprint 5 on Friday morning at 11. Note that everyone's able to take part in the contest, not just women, but only people that identify as female are able to win the cash prizes, which are $1,000 for first place, $500 for second, and $250 for third. So if you identify as a female, I would uh, definitely compete because uh, you could win some cash. And uh, we're going to finish the week off with our week weekly lead code contest 75 on Saturday evening. And note also there's uh, something being put on by Code Forces called the VK Cup, uh, but I'm not going to be covering it because you need to be between the ages of 14 and 23 in order to compete. And uh, it's not an individual contest, it's a team contest. So if you are in between those ages uh, and you have some friends that are also uh, doing some competitive programming, uh, maybe think about entering that contest. And finally, uh, taking a look again at the top 10 viewing countries. So there was no movement in the top seven, uh, but Romania uh, knocked Sweden off the top 10 and Netherlands dropped two. So as always, thanks to everybody for watching uh, all around the globe. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.